Hey everybody, welcome back to A Better Computer. My name is Matt, and in the first video I made this year, I showed my home screen, I showed all the apps I was using, and I think the one that surprised people the most was Todoist. I've been a big proponent of Things 3 for as long as this channel has been around, which is almost three years at this point. I really love Things 3, so why was I using Todoist? I just, I wanted to change it up, I wanted to try something new, and just kind of just get the feel for what else is out there, get out of my bubble a little bit. You know, you use apps for a long time, you get bored of them, you want to see what else is out there. And I am here today to say that I am back to Things 3, I'm moving everything back over there, but I did find some things in Todoist that I really like and will miss when I go back to Things, and I'm going to show you them today to give you an idea for what I would like to see Things add in the future, um, because I think they're really nice features and I'd love to see them, so let's take a look. Okay, and it starts with iOS actually, we'll go to the Mac in a second, but first off we have iOS uh, where the share extension is just much better for Todoist. Uh, so if I go ahead and save the site, uh, it's going to save the name of the site, the URL, I can add a description, I could say it's due today at 5 p.m. Um, all the natural language stuff it has is in here, I can add it to a project, uh, right, all that's here, and I can even do stuff like labels, reminders, priorities, there you go, and just save it whenever I'm done. With things, it's much more limited, so I'm going to go ahead and bring it up, and there we go. It does basically the same thing. It pulls in the same information, and I can add it to a project if I'd like, but I can't set a due date or anything. I can't add labels. I can't add priorities. All I can do is basically save it to my inbox or to a project without any due dates or anything like that. So it's a big limitation uh, between these two. I much prefer uh, Todoists for uh, the iOS share extension. Okay, and now we're back on the Mac. We'll use the Mac for the rest of them. Um, let's pull up Todoist. And so I've got a couple tasks here, and I just want to create a new one. So the keyboard shortcut is Q for that, and I can just start making a task. So I'll be uh, take out the trash uh, tomorrow, 7 p.m., right? And that's going to be in the home project, right? And so I was able to write that all out in natural language. Works really, really nicely. And I have a task in the right project with a specific due date that's going to work great for me. So uh, I'm going to discard that one, and let's go ahead and do the same thing in Things. So I'm just going to do uh, Command-N, which automatically puts it in today, um, but we'll do Take Out the Trash. Uh, then I have to tab over. I can do 7 p.m. Uh, tomorrow, so that's not so bad. Um, and then here's kind of the weird thing, is if I want to get it into a project, I actually have to use this arrow down here to move it to my home project. Um, why I can't just do it from here is kind of weird. I don't know why it goes down here, but yeah, it's okay and fine. Like I can work with it, but it's definitely not as clean as Todoists. Just do it all in line. Just use natural language. I really like that. Another thing I really like is how it handles URLs as tasks. So let's say I want to save this website as a task. I'm going to copy it to my clipboard and then bring up Todoist. Uh, you can also use like the quick entry, whatever, but uh, we'll do that. We'll do paste in the URL. We'll add it to the inbox. That's fine for today. And there we go. And then you're going to see it already has updated the name of the task to the name of the page. And I can still click it. It's still like a clickable URL and everything. So I can go to it and all that good stuff. Um, but it makes it just a little cleaner, a little nicer. So I really like that. Uh, whereas in things, if I go ahead and create a new task, paste in the URL, it's just due today. It's just going to stay like this forever. And it's, again, it's not the end of the world, um, but it is just a nice little quality of life thing that Todoist does that Things does not. Now, you may have noticed that I'm going to mark this as complete and the same thing over here. I'm going to put these side by side, and we're looking at the Today views in both apps. And you can see they have the same two tasks, right? I have to call my brother and I have to weigh in. Um, and I have weigh in and call brother. And this is due at 4 o'clock, this is due at 6 o'clock, and they're ordered that way in Things. Who knows? I don't even know what time these are. Like, just by looking at it, I have to double-click into that. Okay, that's at 6 p.m. That's at 4 p.m. Okay, so what I actually would want to do is kind of move this up here. And, like, sometimes I even get around this uh, by, like, putting in the name of the task, like, the time that it's due, so that I can see that on this view, because I don't have to go into it to see the time that I said I was going to do the thing. So... I really prefer the way that Todoist handles this page, where it shows the time that things are due on the view, and you can customize it to different layouts, you can group them differently, you can sort, and like all this stuff, you have filter options here, whereas in uh, Things, you don't really have control over that, it'll filter them by what area and project they're in, but inside those, the order is completely random, it seems, and you can drag them around, and that's nice, but... It would be nice to be able to just have it automatically sort from things due soonest and then go down the list of things due later in the day. 
Now, this next one I know is a real bother for a lot of people, and I would love to see them fix this. Um, basically, sometimes you have recurring tasks that you need to do like every month, every week, every day or something, and sometimes you do them early. And it would be nice to be able to check them off. Like, this seems pretty basic, right? So in Todoist, I can go to Upcoming. I can look at this. It's a recurring task that happens every day. Uh, I need to weigh in tomorrow. Maybe I've already done it. I'm going to check it off now, and you can see it gets bumped to the following day. Everything works as you'd expect. In Things, I have the exact same task created as a recurring thing. If I go to Upcoming, I can see it tomorrow, but I can't click it, right? I'm trying to click it. I can't. There's no way to mark it done. So I have to wait for tomorrow for it to come along to actually mark it as done. This is a crazy thing that's been an issue for many, many years in Things, and I really pray um, that they can improve this in the future because it's crazy that this isn't possible to be done right now. Another thing you may have noticed is that my Todoist is not red like you're nor normally going to see. It's pink. And that's because if I go into the theme settings, there's a whole bunch of different looks you can give the app. So let's go ahead and make it black. And now it's kind of this black, uh, gray, and white. Um, and these can sync over to all of your other devices. There's alternate app icons on iOS, right? Like I like pink because I think it looks nice. I like my task manager to be friendly and everything. And it's not that uh, things looks bad. I think lo things looks incredibly good. It's just, it's going to look like this for everybody. There's no customization options, which is kind of a shame. Also along the lines of customization is the sidebar. So they both have sidebars in the app. And in things, this is what the sidebar is going to be. I can make it wider or narrower if I want. I can actually make it go away entirely. But I can't really change what's in it. So if I don't care about the logbook for tasks that I've completed, then it's gonna, it's, it doesn't matter. It's just going to be there. Um, someday, anytime, like I can't get rid of these. Whereas in Todoist, I have control and I can choose which things I want to show up here. I just go into the app settings, I go to sidebar, and I can choose which of these are there. I don't use filters and labels, for example, so I don't have that show in my sidebar. Um, I don't really care about seeing my old completed tasks, so I don't have that in my sidebar. Again, that's the logbook here. I can't get rid of it even though it's a page I never use. So it's really nice to have a little bit more customization over what goes over here because that should be sacred space. That should be space that's really protected. Um, and Todoist lets me do that better than things. This next one is not something I necessarily use as much, but it's an accessibility thing. So in Todoist, if this text is too small, I can just hit Command Plus to make it bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And I can make it huge, right? So if I have uh, vision issues or just for whatever reason, I want to make the interface bigger, I can do that. Um, I can go ahead and also make it smaller if I'd prefer. So I can make it really small and make a really small window. You can see at a certain point, the UI gets a little broken, but I like the ability to be able to do this in the first place. Whereas in things, kind of surprisingly, there's no like keyboard shortcuts to change the size. It doesn't respond to dynamic text. So like if you have your system set up to show larger text, things is going to completely ignore that. It's just going to be whatever it is. It's an accessibility thing that I really like to see them add as soon as possible, honestly. And these last two I'll go over really quickly. Um, one is just an API. Uh, Todoist has a lot more of like web automations that are possible because it has a public API that uh, developers can hook into and there's tons of automation services like Zapier and If This and That that do a lot of cool stuff with Todoist that aren't really possible with Things. Things is working on an update that's going to improve their shortcut support, but um, yeah, I think shortcuts and web automations are kind of separate worlds and which one you prefer is going to be different from person to person. I really like the web stuff, so I kind of lean towards what Todoist has. I love the local stuff. I think Things does a great job with that, but it would be nice if they had some web stuff as well. Um, and then I also like that I can customize the quick add view, right? Um, so when I do this in things, uh, it's the quick add kind of menu. And this is going to look the same for everybody. Again, kind of along the lines of what I've talked about previously with customization. There's no way for me to change what shows up here, even though I never use deadlines. Um, I never use tags. They're still going to show up there no matter what. Whereas I can actually adjust that in Todoist. I can choose which actions I want to show when I bring up the kind of new task creation thing, I really just want the due date to show up and I can reorder them as well. Um, but I don't use these features, so I don't need them to show up. So when I go ahead and create a new task, you're going to see just the due date is here. But it's not like the other things are totally gone. There are these three dots. I can go ahead and set them if I'd prefer um, in this one case, but I don't have to. But 
yeah, I think that's 10 things. Uh, those are things that are just, some of them are really small, some of them are bigger. And again, overall, I still prefer things three. So even though this is a video that's mostly negative on things three, I still personally prefer it overall. And hopefully if you're a things user and you're wondering why would someone use something else or why, what should I be looking for in a new version of things, hopefully this video gave you some ideas. So thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.